<laughs> we've been reading in Mark, and pretty much we've been reading it in order with a few things cut out here and there. And this is the central section of Mark, which is the portion where Jesus really explains his mission, and it mostly falls onto deaf ears of the disciples. Today's story was the healing of Bartimaeus, or Bart, as I'll probably refer to him, because it's a little less to say. <laughs> so in this central part of Mark, it all began at the beginning of chapter 8 with a miracle, which was the healing of a blind man. Now that blind man, however, didn't see clearly right away. Jesus had to try a couple times. And finally, he spit on some dirt and then rubbed it, rubbed it on the man's eyes, and then he could see. So that blind man pretty much represents the disciples who just don't understand over and over again. And today's story is no different in that sense. And here, when Bart gets healed, his healing takes place right away. But before that, the disciples uh, shush him and tell him to be quiet and not to bother Jesus. So they really just don't understand Jesus' mission at all, right? But Bartimaeus does understand. He recognizes Jesus and asks for healing. Jesus poses the same question to Bartimaeus that he did to James and John last week. What do you want me to do for you? And the answer is very different. Often, when Jesus heals a person, they disappear, or they go home, or we never hear about them again. But here, the text says that he immediately regained his sight and followed him on the way. He followed Jesus. His faith made him well. He got his healing, and then he followed Jesus. So this is a story about not healing necessarily, but it's about what faith is and what it should be like to follow Jesus. I'm sure Bartimaeus was used to being ignored and told to be quiet. I know that I am often. My whole adult life, I worked in various businesses, and I was often dismissed or undervalued because I'm a woman or younger. And it still happens even now as a priest, even more so, actually, believe it or not. But over time, I have learned not to be quiet when I get shushed, like Bart. We are called to speak God's word, God's message of love. And when we allow ourselves to be silenced, we are not doing that. Now, if Bartimaeus had stopped calling to Jesus, he wouldn't have gotten his healing, and he would have stayed by the side of the road begging for scraps and being ignored. Caroline Lewis writes, quote, Truth quieted results in captivity. We are called to proclaim the truth when truth will be rejected. We are called to preach the truth when no one wants to hear it. We are called to call out when those who need cannot, end quote. So the disciples should have heard Bartimaeus crying for help and then gone and carried him to Jesus, honestly. Instead, they told him to be quiet and get out of the way. But they, like us, they were just falling prey to their societal pressures. Now, our society is secular society. It's pretty much always been that way, if you do your research back to our founding people. We talk about how the church used to be really great, because we had high numbers, uh, but going to church doesn't mean that a person is really faithful. A lot of people like to look back on the 1950s, but the 1950s weren't that great, if you really think about it. Do you think all those people back then really wanted to come to church all the time? It just was the only place they had to go. And then when they went home, did they live out Jesus' mission day in and day out? When we start talking about God in our lives, what happens? For me, the eyes start rolling, right? People start shifting in their chairs a little bit uncomfortably. And if I ever go to a party or something and inevitably someone asks me what I do for a living, 
uh, I say I'm a priest, I can see their face change um, after I explain to them that being a priest is not the same thing as being an ordained minister online for weddings. And first they think that, and I go, no, no. So we instead fall silent, and then we trap ourselves in this box and have a secret faith Instead of loudly and proudly following Jesus to Jerusalem and taking a chance on talking to that friend about what God has done for me. What's the harm in talking? What's the worst that can happen, right? Matt Skinner explains, quote, Bartimaeus says, Faith is not about reciting correct confession or subscribing to certain dogmas like we had with our Zebedee brother's last week or before with the rich man. It is about his unrelenting conviction that Jesus can and will rescue him from his need, end quote. He doesn't need to have the Nicene Creed memorized, right? He doesn't have to know all the prayers and all the rules, but he knows that Jesus is the Son of God. And he knows and expects that he will be transformed in some way by this encounter. He takes a risk, and it pays off for him. He gains his sight, but more importantly, he gains a community of faith and a family in Christ. So your homework to ponder over the next week or whatever is, what would you try if you knew it couldn't fail? It's always a good thing to think about. Often we won't try something new a new ministry or get a new job or a new idea because we're afraid that we will fail. And things will fail always. That's how it works. That's life. Life comes with disappointments. But if you never try, you never gain anything. Or if you'd prefer Yoda's philosophy, do or do not, there is no try. Risk means failure sometimes. Now, God never promised us an easy, problem-free life if we follow Jesus. If we sit silently and never talk about God's mission and our mission, we won't lose anything, but you won't gain anything either. We need to experience Jesus and then go and follow him. And this is the example that Bartimaeus gives us. Meet Jesus, have faith. Go out there and do ministry. <clears throat> or if you want to go with James, faith without works is dead. There's a little Lutheran theology for you. We can believe in God all day long, but our actions give away our true beliefs. And we especially need to speak up now. Day after day, I just see worse and worse stories of violence and hate against our neighbors. And it's just crazy. God tells us in Scripture, in the Hebrew Bible and in the New Testament, to welcome the stranger, feed the hungry, clothe the poor, love our neighbors. And there's no buts in any of those sentences. We live in America, the land of plenty and the land of opportunity. And we have plenty. Trust me. <coughs> the majority of our ancestors traveled here from war-torn countries. My side of the family came from the potato famine in Ireland. They were starving. They wanted a better life. They weren't turned away or wouldn't be here. Love your neighbor, even if they're of a different religion. Love your neighbor, even if they speak a different language than you. Love your neighbor even if you don't totally understand everything about their lives. It doesn't matter. We don't have to understand everything. We just need to love. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to learn from Bartimaeus today and speak up about God's love. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, quote, Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak, and not to act is to act, end quote. We all know what happened to him. He was killed by the Nazis, but he was not silent. So never be silent about your 
faith or about what God has done for you and about what God continues to do in your life. Go out there and follow Jesus by doing what he asks of us week after week. It doesn't change. Love each other. Speak in love. Spread love. Always. Speak your truth to the world. And don't forget the love part. Always. And never let anybody shush you or tell you to get out of the way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Ugh.